The underground chambers. As the trio set off that night to stop Snape, they were stopped themselves by Neville, who believed they were sneaking out without reason again. And was worried that they would lose Gryffindor even more points. Desperate as they were for time, Hermione paralyzed Neville. When they arrived the third floor corridor, it was to find Fluffy awake, but a harp by his feet. Remembering what Hagrid told them, Harry began to blow into the wooden flute Hagrid gave him for Christmas. From the first notes, Fluffy's eyes began to droop, and he quickly fell asleep. Jumping through the trapdoor, they found themselves in Professor Sprout's room, filled with Devil's Snare, which almost smothered them. Harry Potter and the Winkies P.S. Harry retrieves the right key from the swarm. The next room, Professor Flitwick's, held a bunch of flying keys and some broomsticks. Harry found the correct key, caught it, and unlocked the next door with it. The next room was Professor McGonagall's, and had a large chessboard, for a game of wizard's chess which Ron won at the cost of sacrificing himself. Harry and Hermione continued to the next room, leaving an unconscious Ron where they could return for him, to find an unconscious troll. Professor Quirrell's room. Lastly, they entered Professor Snape's room, and found seven potions in bottles along with a roll of paper giving clues on which one to drink to continue, a logic puzzle. Hermione solved the puzzle, and at Harry's urging, drank the potion that allowed her to head back so that she could get run out while Harry drank the potion to go forward to the final room. B1C17M1 Quirrell and Harry by the mirror ever eyesed. Harry battles Voldemort for possession of the Philosopher's Stone. Once inside the room, Harry's attention was drawn to two things, the mirror of her eyes, and Quirrell. Quirrell bound Harry before explaining that the mirror was the key to finding the stone. Desperate to distract him from the mirror, Harry questioned Quirrell, who revealed that was serving Lord Voldemort. And although Snape hated Harry because Snape allegedly loathed his father in their time at school, he never wanted him dead. Unable to locate the stone, Quirrell asked Voldemort for help. Much to Harry's surprise, a voice which seemed to issue from Quirrell himself said to use the boy. Looking in the mirror, Harry saw his reflection pull the stone out of his pocket and replace it, at which point he felt the real stone drop his real pocket. He told Quirrell that he saw himself winning the House Cup, but Voldemort, an accomplished legilimens, informed Quirrell that Harry was lying, and ordered Quirrell to allow him to speak to the boy. 
Quirrell unwrapped his turban, and turned away from Harry. Voldemort, who was sticking out of the back of Quirrell's head, demanded that Harry give him the stone. Harry refused, and Quirrell seized him, causing Harry's scar to sear with pain. But contact with Harry's skin burned Quirrell's hands, forcing him to release Harry. Harry, realizing that contact caused Quirrell pain, grabbed Quirrell's arm and held on until he blacked out. B1C17M2 Harry's first hospital wing stay. Harry in the hospital wing after the attack in the underground chamber. He woke in the hospital wing, where Albus Dumbledore reassured him that Quirrell did not succeed at getting the stone, and that the stone had in fact been destroyed. Dumbledore then explained the reason why Quirrell could not touch him was that because Harry's mother had died to save him, granting him protection against Voldemort. At the end of term feast, after seemingly congratulating Slytherin on winning the House Cup, Dumbledore awarded Ron and Hermione 50 points, Harry 60 points, and Neville 10. Which allowed them to win the cup. Second year Ron Weasley, you're a parcelmouth. Why didn't you tell us? Now the whole school is gonna think you're his great 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 grandson or something. Harry, but I'm not. I can't be. Hermione Granger, he lived a thousand years ago. For all we know, you could be. Harry finding out that he is a parcel myth. Harry's second year in 1992 started out badly, and gradually got worse. Throughout the preceding summer, the Dursleys became so fearful of his newly discovered magical abilities that they locked away all of his school supplies immediately after his return home to them. They even went as far as to ban him from saying words pertaining or related to magic in general. As evident to Harry getting reprimanded by Uncle Vernon for saying the word magic at the breakfast table one day. This, however, did not stop Harry from exploiting their paranoia in order to have quiet time alone, such as taunting Dudley with made-up magical incantations like Jiggery Pokery, Hocus Pocus. and Squiggly Wiggly whenever the latter teased him. Furthermore, he had no contact with any of his friends nor any news from the wizarding world, and Hedwig took to making noise out of boredom from being padlocked in her cage. B2C1M2 Dorsley's Garden Harry in the Garden at 4 Privet Drive On the 31st of July, Harry's 12th birthday, Harry felt very lonely from receiving no letters from his friends. 
Dudley taunted him stating who would want